Well, we, we are here tonight uh, with Dr. Edgar, Edgar Garcia. Uh, Dr. Garcia is a, is a good friend of mine. Uh, he is from Ecuador, same city, same country that I'm from. And uh, he has uh, gracefully um, accepted my invitation to uh, share this webinar with us. Uh, he's going to be talking about complete dentures. I do want to make emphasis uh, that this is not a regular complete denture type of webinar. I know that there's a lot of things, a lot of tips and tricks that Dr. Garcia is going to share with you tonight that are going to be extremely helpful. But the most important one is when we when, when he starts talking about mandibular dentures. Uh, as we know, mandibular dentures are, are one of the most difficult uh, restorative procedures that we can do in, in, in a general dentistry or a prosthodontic practice, mainly when we do not use any implants. And as we know, there are a lot of patients out there that either financially or just because of health or, or or not having enough bone, they cannot have any any implants placed. So, you know, using a specific technique developed by Dr. Abby, uh, it's called suction effective technique, which I know that Dr. Garcia is 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 um is an expert on this technique and he's going to share a lot of tips and tricks in relationship with that technique that I know are going to be extremely useful. I have personally seen some of his videos on him removing some of the dentures on his patients and just listening to that suction uh, and, and, the, and the actual tension that he's got to put onto the, the, to the, uh, to the denture in order for him to displace the denture out of the patient's mouth. So I don't want to get into the topic. I don't want to ruin his presentation. I just want to go ahead and, and give the microphone to Dr. Garcia. He will present himself and I will be interrupting if I have any questions. Dr. Garcia, I will be interrupting you just to make sure that the people that, that are followers, the people that are watching this video, I, I know that they're going to have questions themselves. And I just want to try to interpret whatever thing I have in my mind uh, based out of what I think that they may they may also want to ask. So uh, thank you very much for accepting my invitation and, and, and welcome to our YouTube channel. Doug, thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Thanks everyone who's watching. As Dr. Mario says, uh, I've been teaching dentures, I think more than 10 years, a conventional type of dentures. But today we are gonna talk about a different kind of complete dentures. I'm gonna combine semi-conventional protocols uh, with digital protocols to obtain dentures that have extremely high retention. Okay, so let's get started. Well, as doctor says, um, I'm from Guayaquil, Ecuador. I obtained my dental degree at Catholic University of Guayaquil. And then I obtained my postgrade degree at UNAM at Mexico. And nowadays I'm teaching at the U.S. University here in Guayaquil. I'm a professor at the prosthodontic department. And this year, this year I've been traveling uh, for a lot of countries here in LATAM, teaching these protocols. It's not just only one protocol, but it's there are different protocols combining, as I told, conventional treatments with digital protocols, okay? Many people think that the most important thing in dentures is this, aesthetic, the characterization, not only the dentist, but the labs, they want to do this like beautiful dentures, but if this is not the important thing. I This is a plus. I, this is not the main goal of our treatment, okay? Because none of our patients uh, go like this. <laughs> Every day showing their beautiful gums, okay? We have to stop and think where are we going and what is our goal, not only in life, but also in dentistry. Okay, so what do I think about where, why do I say about what, where we are going? Because this type of dentures is the ones that I always uh, receive from my patients in my clinic. As you can see, the extensions are really wrong. So the retention, the stability and the support, it's been compromised. Unlike these dentures that you can see that it's different, the extension that he has. This is our main problem, okay? Because 
every day I receive patients with complete dentures, lower dentures that dance. They have non-retention, but non-retention. You look at them and they dance. They have zero retention. And you can see that there's a lack of knowledge because this is not like a lower denture is supposed to be. But unlike we were teach, we were taught in dental school, the type of the form of the lower dentures that we are doing today is a lot bigger than the ones we were taught at dental school, okay? Yeah. This is our goal. Wow. No matter the patient, I can tell you that in every case, I'm talking about the lower ones, we are going to have retention in each one of them. As I told you before, I have more than 10 years teaching conventional complete dentures, but it was not until 2020, I think, that I got to know this different philosophy of doing dentures that Dr. Abe, Dr. Seichiro Someya, Dr. Katsushi Sato uh, teach in their books, not only their books, but also their articles. I read each one of them and I tried to summarize and I tried to simplify some of the things that they teach to my in, in, in the protocols in my clinic. Okay. So first of all, the name of their technique is suction effective mandibular complete denture. Okay. And they ask you, why is suction difficult to obtain for the mandibular denture? Where? Well, as I told you, it's not, it's not difficult, but why we think it's difficult, okay? It's because we have, unlike the upper jaw, we have the presence of the tongue that's moving a lot. The smaller area of interior surface of the denture base in contact with the underlying mucosa, a smaller amount of mobile bridge mucosa, the formable re retromolar pads, three times larger removable volume of mucobuccal and mucolingual fold. Everything moves down there. Everything moves. Everything is like, like a flabby tissue. Everything moves. So we were taught that this kind of movements makes difficult to do a peripheral sealing. Okay? But it's not difficult. But the way we were doing things we were not gonna we were not going we were not going to obtain uh the kind of retention that we are obtaining now okay so i'm gonna number some uh points that i think it's important that we have to know and we have to do to do this uh type of retention i met the suction the suction <laughs> yeah <laughs> The, the suction, okay? First of all, it's a spongy tissue. When I was a student and I saw this kind of, of spongy tissue, I almost screamed because we were thought that this is not good, that this type of a spongy tissue was going to move our denture, okay? But nowadays, I can tell you that when we have this amount of spongy tissue, we are gonna certainly have a lot of retention, okay? Because this is gonna help us to do the sealing of the lingual part of our denture, okay? So in this case, we have a good amount of spongy tissue, not like this one, but it's a good one. But look at the difference with this patient. We have a poor, a poor amount of spongy tissue. So we can classify this as a, a patient with good amount of, of spongy tissue, a fair and a poor one, okay? Also, 
we can talk about the retraction of the tongue. When a patient retracts the tongue more than four centimeters, okay, it's going to be easier for them to break the ceiling, and it's gonna, it's gonna not gonna have a, like that good retention that we want, okay. But but if we don't have, if we have a patient that have poor amount of spongy lingual tissue, and also have a uh, a huge retraction of the tongue, we can do something about it, okay? We, when we have this kind of patient, we have to thicken the area, okay? Because we want to seal that part. We, we want to prevent that the patient breaks the ceiling, okay? This is, uh, this part, we obtain it, we thicken it when we are doing the border molding, okay? We put a lot of impression material in this area to thicken the area. As you can see, this patient is has like a poor amount of spongy tissue, but also the tongue, I, I cannot see the tongue, it's super, super back, okay? But we have to compensate this. We have to thicken this area. So as you can see in this prototype, the area, it's covered. Okay, and in this patient, we have a lot of retention, okay? But if we don't do this, it's gonna be easy for the patient to break the ceiling, okay? Also, we have to look up about the retromolar path because we know the retromolar path, it's an important uh, part of the lower denture that we have to cover, okay? There's the BTC point, okay, that there's, if we do not copy this area, this is gonna be a, there's gonna be a space that if we have a, uh, this space, we are gonna, gonna have a peripheral ceiling and we are not gonna have a good retention, okay? But also it's important not just to copy it, but to copy it in the correct way, okay? We have different type of retromolar pads. We have, we prefer to have this, the, this kind of retromolar pad that it's it has a good form and it's a firm retromolar pad. Unlike this one that is look like a, a balloon when it's a, how how do I say this in flower? When a balloon is deflated, no air. <laughs> okay, but when I see when I show this light, I ask the the doctors to 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 tell me which um, which retromolar pad do they think would be better for our denture, Doctor Mario? What what do you think, the left one or the right right one? The retromolar pad that would be best for my for the denture. I think that the one on the left. That's the most common answer of the doctors but let me tell you it's the same retromolar pad what's the difference that this one is when the patient has its mouth closed and this one is with the when the patient has the, the mouth open okay. so the retromolar pad change drastically when we open our mouth okay so the impression that the kind of impression that I was taught in dental school for the lower ones was to do like this, open, move your tongue, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. We took impressions with the, 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 the mouth wide open, okay? But as you can see, the difference, it's tremendous. Right. The retromolar pad. And this, will be directly affected in our ceiling for the retention. Because when the mouth is open and we took the impression with the mouth open and we make the denture like this, when the patient put the denture in their mouth, there's gonna be a space as you can see in this part of the slide, okay? Because the patient does not go uh, the day like this. Right, right. 
we, the patient has a mask closed uh, almost all the day, okay? Right. Unlike when we took the impression, we take the impression with the mouth closed, we are gonna have sealed that area, okay? So as I told you, we need to copy the retro model pad, not only copy it, but copy it the, the correct way, okay? with the mouse closed. So mandible impressions are always taken with mouth closed, but this is not something new. This is not like, oh, we discovered it like two years ago, right? 20 years ago. Voucher, 1951. <laughs> 19... The rational behind the closed mouth impression technique Natural movements by the patient will conform the impression material to the anatomic limitation when the mouse is closed and under pressure. The pressure applied in closing the jaws on the impression materials will displace the soft supporting tissue while the peripheries are being formed. Okay? What's the difference from then to now? The kind of materials that we have now. Okay? But I, I I just want to say that this is not something new. So we, ha we have the advantage to have uh, different kinds of impression materials that's going to help us in the different zones on, on while sealing the denture zone to take advantage of this of, of, of this philosophy. But what do I what I think is the most important part of our treatment is this the preliminary impression that we are going to take in our patients. I, I do scans with my scanner, with my internal scanner, but it's not going to change. Um, it's not going to replace this step. Um, it's more important in the lower one because as we know, as we can see, as we, it's, it's experience in our practice to do the uh, the maxillary denture is easy okay but with the lower ones i i cannot skip this step okay this is a uh, a tray okay that is different from the ones that we used to use with uh, the metal ones that has like an alien form of, of lower jaw because they don't look like uh, a lower jaw impression tray. This is the frame cut back tray, okay? This tray is special because as you can see, it, it has like a space where's the, the buccal shell area and the retromolar pad. But some people say, but why, why, uh, it's not covered the most important part of our denture because the primary support areas are the retromolar pad and the buccal shell. But that's why it's not covered because we don't want with the tray to, with the impression material to deform the area. So we want the area to be copied without something that displays that displace it, okay? Or, or compresses the tissue, either displace or compress. That's what you want to try to prevent, correct? Exactly. And I want to, to, to obtain also what happens with the tongue and with the cheek. I want to copy it in its natural form, okay? So also we have, as you can see, a larger space for the tongue to move, okay? And the handle that it has, goes like this, it goes up and then to the front so the patient can really close and the handle will not bother when it's the patient with the mouse closed, okay? I love this tray. The impression technique using this tray is super easy. It's super easy as Giro Abe presented on his article. You can modify it if it's too too big, too long, but also 
he says that it doesn't matter if you don't have like a special alginate to use it. If you have a regular one, okay, a regular one, you can add like from 30 to 50% extra water, okay, cold water to make it more fluido. More fluid. Okay, fluid, so you right? can inject it, okay? You can use like an Alma alginate syringe or you can use like a, a regular one use syringe that doesn't have um, tip, a tip, okay? And you also need some retractors, okay? So let me go back, go back one slide, please. So just, just to kind of make sure that everybody understands this, you're using the tray. This is the special tray, the FCB tray that has all the specifications that you just mentioned. This tray can be modified if needed. Like you see on, on figure three, you can modify the tray if it's over, if, if it has too much overextensions. If when if you don't have the special alginates that he recommends for the final for the preliminary impression, you can use regular, regular alginate. All you have to do is that you're going to have one of the one of the mixes is going to go into a syringe, like a monoject type of syringe, big syringe, a 10 cc, a 10 cc syringe, where you're going to add 30 to 40 percent more water to the mix so that the alginate flows better. But I have this question for you, Dr. Garcia. The other portion of the alginate that goes on the tray, is that mixed normally with a, with a normal amount of water or you also want it to be diluted more? It can be both ways, okay? okay. Some people prefer to do that. Only the alginate is going to go into the syringe. It has the extra water. And okay. the another part that's going to be on the tray, it's like with the normal amount of water. Okay. okay. How do you Both do it? Ways. What is your recommendation? How do you do it? It depends on the operator, but I I, I prefer uh, all with extra water. Okay. Okay. So as you are going to see in the video, almost 90% of the alginate is going to be injected. I start at the retromolar pad, go all through the lingual part of the mandible, and just inject everything, everything. And you're using you're using regular alginate. Exactly. Okay. Okay. As you can see, I have a lot of time to work. And go with the tray. I insert in the mouth. I ask the patient for elevate a little bit the tongue and just close, close the mouth. Also, we are going to do like this, like this massage, right. like upwards, like this, to prevent uh, an excess of material that's going to go through the cheek. And that's it. And that's it. It's it's the, the easiest impression that I have ever taken, okay? And also, the results of this impression, it's awesome because, as you're going to see, we have all the information that we want. Everything, everything that I want. Look, it's it's a beautiful, but most important, easy impression. It's super easy, this impression. Right. And I think that, you know, thank you for sharing the video. I think that when the, you know, all the participants that are watching the video, that are watching this webinar, just looking at the video and, and with your explanation also, it, it really seems to be very easy. It doesn't seem like it's very technique sensitive at all. It just seems like it's a very straightforward technique and, and, and I can see the results of the impression on your on your trace. And what happens if you don't like the impression? Just take another one. It's super easy and it's not uncomfortable to the patient because the patient is going to close the mouth. Right. Okay? It's super easy, but for me, this part of the technique is the most important one, okay? Because um, almost, I think, 80% of the time, a little bit more, when I take out this alginate impression, I hear... So you have the, you, you feel the suction. And you know what? I, I, I agree with you. I've never done this technique before, but when I make my impressions... 
And I told you one time when we were talking, uh, uh, Edgar, I told you that I still use Compound. I'm a little bit on the old school there. Uh, even though I have, you know, PVS in my office, I use Compound to make my border molding. And that's my experience with my Compound, mainly on the upper on the upper denture. But I, when I remove the tray, I can feel the suction with when, when I'm making my impression. But my impression is the final one. You're feeling the suction on your preliminary impression, which is what's different. I, I don't know if you 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 were able to see in the first video that I showed that sometimes I think it's going to be 50-50 when I do the base plate with the bite rim. Oh, yeah, I saw I it. I saw it. it. Yeah, 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 when yeah. I try it, I already have suction. Right. With only this impression. Right. That's what I, I, I think this kind of impression with this tray is the most important part and the the part that I think is the key to obtain a effective suction. Right. Okay. Because I try all the steps that I that are after this with scanning techniques. And I did not obtain the same results as when I did this kind of impression. Okay. So I don't think for now it's gonna be a replacement for this technique for me. Okay. So after that, at the second appointment, we are gonna make some base rims, some base plates and bite rims to take the impressions. Because as I told you before, we need we need to take the lower impression with uh, the mouth closed. Okay. So we make a base plate with bite rims before the second appointment. We do um, the value of promedium, average oh, value of the, the average values for the thickness of the of the wax. Yep, exactly. And we're gonna do the border molding. I I like do the, doing the border molding with heavy body, normal set. Okay, the one that with the syringe. Okay, I'm not talking about putty material. I'm talking about the heavy body material one. And in the upper denture, it's not, it's not going to change from what we are used to do. It, I think it's the same. The one thing that I do not do is I, I don't uh, put any spacer with uh, wax. I do it directly to the to my model. Your cast, right? Exactly. So this is this base plate. In other words, is your final tray? Is your exactly. final tray? Exactly. You can do it with acrylic or this kind of material that, that, that is that triad. Exactly. And that comes out of the pore of your alginate. So you did an alginate yes. for the upper and alginate for the lower, and you do that out of that pore you fabricate this. Okay, just like exactly. we normally. So as you can see. Everything I like to do is with retractors. I pull the buccal mucosa in the front, on the side, and also I ask the patient to move the jaw from right to left to avoid the condylos. Um, the coronary process, I think, right? Exactly. So you get an impression of that area of the movement of the coronary process also. Exactly. So as you can see, I don't think there's a a big difference from the techniques that we are used to do. But I do this before uh, the bite rim adjustment. Okay. The bite rim is not cortado. It's not. You don't cut it off. At this point, this is the first step in the second appointment. Do the border molding. So, of so the you're do it, you're, I mean, in other words, you have the tray with the wax. The wax is at the average ranges for the upper and mandibular uh, bite ring wax, but you haven't created any notches on this wax. All you're doing right now is using the actual custom tray for your border molding, and then your, I guess, your final impression. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. But at, at first, I, I do this because we need a space for the border bowling. Right. Okay? So if when I have this space, I'm not going to have retention. 
So the first step for me is do the border molding. I'm it's not with the, the mouth closed. Right. Okay. But after this, I clean, I cut the excess of the of the heavy material. And I after this, I do the the DVO uh, adjustment, the with the wax. How the much, wax. how much of the bite rim is gonna show, the right. midline, everything that we know. Okay. After that, after that, I do the lower border molding. Okay. okay. At this point, we have to have like this exact DVO. No, it's not DVO. It's video, video, video. I'm sorry, I'm talking yes, <laughs> in <video>. Spanish. <laughs> right. The video. Okay. Because it's not the same kind of pressure that we're going to have in the impression if the patient has not it's not with the correct video imagine if we do the the, the border molding of the impression like this huh? right or look this right okay we we need that exact video before doing this and i think uh, the same steps of the border molding on the upper denture as the same steps as the more uh, border molding of the lower denture are the same steps on the impression. Okay? okay, the same steps in the upper, like doing this, and, and the, the lower one. The I, I, I all I all only do these three steps, Edgar. Okay, oh. uh, I don't know why it's gonna <laughs> first. I'm going to show the video of this, okay? But first, uh, I don't know. It's a little bit crazy, the computer. It's going to be moving. <laughs> I, I insert the tray, the base plate with the rim, and I ask the patient to move the tongue from side to side. The second step, I ask the patient to swallow. And on the third step, I ask the patient to with the point of the tongue to push at the backward back zone of the bite rim like this so with the tip of the tongue you want them to push the bite wing forward the, the bite ring forward the lower bite ring forward exactly because okay. it's gonna va a tensar esa zona okay so it's gonna create tension in that area exactly that but that that's what we want okay and you are gonna put your hand over here because you need to feel, you need to know if the patient is doing the, the correct uh, movement. Okay. Okay. You can try and push your tongue and you feel this and you can feel if the patient is not doing this step correctly. And I think also this step, not the tongue, not the swallowing, but this pushing of the tongue is key to having suction. Okay. Now, when, when you let me let me repeat the three steps. Step number one, you're gonna put the tray inside. This tray has not been border molded yet, right? No. Okay. So you put the tray in the patient's mouth, the lower mandibular tray in the patient's mouth, like you see in figure number one, and you have the patient move the tongue side to side. Step number two, you remove your fingers from the patient's mouth. You leave the tray the mandibular tray with the wax rim in the side of the patient's mouth and you have the patient swallow. And then the third step, you had the patient put the tip of the tongue against the palate and push the palate towards exactly. the palate. While occluding. While occluding the upper and the lower rims. Exactly. Okay, so at this point, both rims are in the mouth. Exactly. Now the upper rim has only been border molded. It has no final impression yet. Correct. Okay, perfect. Uh, at the end of this part, I'm going to show uh, some drawings. Okay. That's going to uh, do a, a, a little resume. Okay, of, like a summary, like a summary of all the steps. Summary of, of the steps. Okay. So here's the video the retractors. The upper is only border molded, right? Exactly. Okay. Because if it's not border molding, it'll uh, move. In some cases, it will fail. Right. And you've border molded and you also eliminated already the excess of the border molding. Exactly. Okay. And then you put it back in the patient's mouth. Okay. 
Correct. And also you can put a, a Vaseline on the upper one because when you don't want to them to be glued. Just to stick together, right? Exactly. So I put the tray in. I ask for them to remove the retractors, move the tongue from side to side, to swallow, to maintain occluding. And I ask the patient to push with the tongue towards the palate. The They're the pushing tip. with the tip of the tongue against the palate, correct? Exactly. So okay. uh, that's why I put my, and, and that's it. That's what I what I say when I I think their steps are super easy, right? Okay. So one question that I think that everybody's having. So you said at the beginning you do the border molding on the upper. After the motor molding of the upper, you remove the tray, you cut the excess, you put the tray back in the patient's mouth, and then you work on your upper rim, midline, the display of the teeth, and the and the and and and, and make sure that the 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 the, the uh, the wax rim is leveled so there you see the fox plane to make sure that it's parallel to the interpupillary line. Once Correct. you're done with that, then you do the lower, you put the lower uh, in, you have the patient practice the three steps, then you border mold it. But you've also already uh, flattened out or cut any excess of the wax on the lower so that you've already verified the vertical before you do the border molding. Is that correct of the lower? Perfect. Correct. Okay, perfect. Now, I just wanted to make sure that everybody's understanding what I'm understanding. Perfect. This is what we obtain at the end. Okay, the, the the final impression is like the same steps of the border molding. Okay, right. the difference is that in the final step, I used a uh, light body material, light body material. I only use heavy body for the border molding, light body for the final impression. And if I have like um, some areas that I don't like, you can use uh, this, I don't know, the... Is it regular material? Ex extra light. Oh, okay, extra yeah, yeah. Light material, okay? So here's the, the, the summarize. Okay. This is the first thing that I do is the maxillary border molding, okay? okay? After this, I adjust, I modify the upper rim. Right. I use a uh, fox plane, okay? I see the midline, the the inclination of the occlusal, occlusal plane uh -huh. from being front on, on a little view, the point, the midline, the smile line, the canning line, everything, okay? After this, I obtain the the video that we want, okay? So we adjust the lower one with the upper one, okay? I don't, I don't need at this step to do a border molding for it not to not move like when I did with the upper one, right. because if you did a correct alternate impression, when you put the base plate in the patient's mouth, it's gonna go like this. It's not gonna move. It's gonna fit perfectly. Okay. It's not gonna be like the 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 dentures or the base plate that we used to do that have a, like a little no. They're gonna stay perfect. Okay. So I it's not necessary for me to do a border molding before uh, obtaining this correct uh, video. Okay. So after I have this correct video. And I know when the patient closes his mouth, it's going to be the muscle working like co correctly. After that, I do the lower bottom molding. Okay. okay. So then final impression on the maxillary denture, final impression on the lower denture. And after this, I use my... Internal scan to scan everything. 
Okay. Are we good? Yes, 100%. <laughs> Perfect. So it doesn't matter what scanner do you have. You can have also the, 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 the scanner de escritorio. Yeah, your bench top scan. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Everything works. Uh, I work you, with. You many... can have a handheld scanner, an office scanner, or a lab scanner, whichever scanner you have. Exactly. I, I love Medit. I have Medit. I love the software. It's super friendly. And through these months that I travel to these other countries, I try many internal scanners. They are all the same, but I still prefer the the friendliness of the software of the Medit. Okay. Okay. In the Medit software, the first thing that I do is to scan the intaglio of my impression. I go with the upper impression. After that, the software has like these steps that makes easier this part. I go through all the scan of the of the bite ring and the wax and the base plate. Then I go to a lower one. And if you have the scanner in your clinic, because you do this outside the patient's mouth, obviously, after these steps, when I do the occlusal record, I put them on the patient's mouth. Okay, I do the occlusal uh, scan in the mouth. After this, I export the meshes to Exocad. You have different programs, Blender, Blue Sky, um, Tree Shape, but I, I, I love making digital dentures in Exocad. This video that I'm gonna that I'm gonna show you, I did I I think I took seven minutes designing. It was super fast. I did it like yesterday just to show you that it's super easy to design a complete denture. Obviously, when I do a real patient, I took a little bit more time. Uh, the face scan that you are watching is the one is one made with uh, an iPhone. Okay, there are several apps that you can use to do this type of face scan. Uh, the one that I use now, it's called WIDAR, W-I-D-A-R. It's a paid uh, app, but it's like only $60 a year, I think. And for me, works nicely, okay? It's not super exact, but for me, it's enough, it's better than to work with photos, okay, with pics. So here it's me doing it super fast, obviously it's fast in the video. You can do uh, a model analysis using a easy way or a little more advanced way in Exocad. It, it, the, Gerber, the Gerber philosophy, it's all in Exocad. So, all the the thing that we know the when we use the the profile compass technique to to measure the stop line in the lower ones everything everything here so for me passing uh, from analog to digital was super easy because it's all in here right as you can see we do not use uh, uh, cast models, model cast. We don't. But, model. You did, but you did use a cast model after your alternate impressions. Exactly. That's the. That's the only cast model that you use. Now let me ask you a quick question. You, you did the alternate impression with the, for the lower for the lower arch with the tray. What yes. do you use a special the special tray also for the maxillary arch or you just a regular plastic tray for or metal tray? A regular one. Okay, perfect. Regular, whatever you want. Regular I, I, edentulous tray. Exactly. But uh, I call this the the easier protocol. Why the easier protocol? Because this protocol that I'm showing, uh, even a student can do it because it's super easy. Right. 
Uh, you don't need an internal scanner to do this protocol. You don't need one, okay? But if you want to take advantage of you having an internal scanner, for example, nowadays, I do not do the, the model cast of the first impression. I scan it. The, the alginate impression, you scan the alginate. I scan the alginate impression and I get rid of the alginate. I do, nowadays, I do not uh, do a model for the, cast. For the model, right. Exactly. Uh, and I think we can do like the uh, second part of, of, of the lecture talking about this other option of protocol okay but because it's also easy easy but i think and i show this first because this is the easier one right right and then i think that it's important that they understand the difference in, in the concept also right how do you how why are you using one technique versus the other I, i'm i'm summarizing everything because the when i talk about this in in in, in a course it's like uh two days lecture combining with a uh, uh, live patient. So it's a lot of information. And one of the things, one of the things that I want every, every one of our, our viewers to know is that, you know, our plan is to bring Dr. Garcia to the United States. Uh, and we're planning to do that in this coming year in 2024, so that we can have a, a, a one or two day course where we're going to do all the lecturing part. He's going to do all the lecturing part and hopefully we have a live patient for us to do during that that uh this this uh hands-on course that we're planning to do uh in 2024. So uh just you know just keep following our channel, visit our webpage because you will find the information there. Thank you, Doc. So after this design, we have many options. Okay. But here in Latin America, uh, it's not an option to do a milled one, okay? Because I, I I know some of you don't know the reality here in LATAM, but the, the importance of complete dentures here, it's, they, they only do implants, they only prepare them, uh, they, I'm talking about the labs uh, for veneers. We have like the best ceramists I work, work with, I think they're one of the best in the world, Julian Cardona, Raúl Villafuerte. They are excellent uh, laboratories and ceramists, but they have forgotten the complete denture treatments. I mean, it's not well paid, not only not for the dentists, but also for the lab technicians. So the quality of the labs uh, here in LATAM for doing this kind of dentures is super, super low. Okay. We, we don't have labs to do the Gerber techniques, BPS techniques, okay? Maybe one in a hundred of laboratories, okay? So the thing that I was searching while reading, investigating, trying with my patient, at the at the clinic at the university was to obtain some protocols that we can do in every level of dentistry in every level of I don't know of social social yes yeah in every socio economic level exactly so the milled uh, prosthesis were not an option okay so that's where I look at the at what I think and we all know is the future of of digital dentistry that are the printed the the printed ones okay the impressions the impressions of the of our of restorations okay there are a lot of resins that many companies offers you to do dentures but most of them does not uh, does not have the properties to to make it through to a complete uh, full denture that's going to be there for many years okay there are there are uh, a few uh, brands that i am sure that if my mom needs one i'm going to do it with that kind of printer and that kind of resin and one of them is formlabs okay i think it's one of these brands that has uh full 
that have done a lot of research, I think, also. And they've they've done, they've invested a lot of research and development of technology also. Exactly. So that's the 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 brand that I use for those who were wondering what kind of, of printer that I have. It's Formlabs. The we this is, also, this, is print, this is printed in your office. Exactly. This is printed the the base, the teeth, okay, and we cement them. And uh, after that, you can uh, modify it with some characterizations, okay, okay with uh, tintes. Yeah, with some, uh, with, uh, yeah, these are called the tints, tints and opaques. I mean, this, in this, I think that GC America makes a very nice tints for, uh, for characterization of dentures. Exactly. And if you want to go like to another level, you can use materials like Nexco. I, uh, Nexco that they if, if you have obviously you need to have the ability to do this right. but you can create beautiful beautiful dentures like using Nexco uh, to the, do the, this characterization but also you see that, that I printed the teeth you have an option to do not but also to use a stock a stock uh, teeth from Vita Evoclar and while you are designing the denture, uh, they give you the exact space that when you print this base, you only have to insert the attach. teeth and bond them, insert right? The, exactly. Okay. But also talking about Latin America, as as a consequence of not mm, taking removable prosthesis. Uh, to the level of importance, we have lack of amount of teeth that we can use. So it's not for me an option to to do this kind of design. So I prefer to print everything. Okay. Also, I have many support that this kind of resin, it's at the same level, even in some properties, better than the classical uh, teeth that we use at the conventional dentures. Okay. Exactly. So what happens if this uh, occlusal record goes wrong? Because as we all know, as we can talk to the patient and say, okay, we can do close your mouth and uh, do like this. No, no, no. Be calm. Close. Uh, Right, right. Exactly. What's the best way to do this, Doc? The best way to, to record you it? To record this. In what position? Everything. What's the best way uh, you think is the, the, the most exact way to do this occlusal registration? Oh, there's so I many. The way that I normally do it, honestly, is I actually separate a little bit the rims on the back. I create some space on the back. I have some notches and I use PVS that interlocks between the upper and the lower rims. For me, the 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 technique that we will have, we will obtain a better occlusal registration. It's by doing a, a Gothic arch trace okay. yep. technique. Okay. And you can see in this patient, I tried the, the classical way with the occlusal rims, but the patient was all like this all the time, right. all the time. So in the second appointment, well, it's gonna, I think the third appointment, I was not going to do some prototypes, but with the, so I designed dentures, okay? but with the intention to help me to do a second occlusal, more exact registration. So I adapted these STL files, okay, to the prototypes and I printed them. Also, when I have this, like I, I, this is the one contact to maintain my video, uh -huh. okay? So I eliminate the anatomy of the posterior teeth. I only maintain the anatomy of the six anterior teeth, okay? Because I wanted 
at this third appointment, not only to do this uh, kind of closer registration, but I also wanted to look uh, how the patient looked with this uh, uh, size of teeth. Okay, so I printed these prototypes. I do the tracing technique. Also, you have this circle is going to attach and prevent when you have found this position to move the job. Quick question, and Dr. Garcia, because I know I know that when you're doing when you're doing a uh, gothic art tracing, you first you know you don't have the the little circle in, initially placed. Normally, the when we were using the metal gothic arches, you know we had to kind of like have a black paint on the on the on the on the flat portion of the upper. Then you had the patient move left and right, left and right, forward until he went all the way back. And once you got that V point. That's when you inserted that little circle so that you can now lock that in place and get your bite registration in that area. Do you use the same technique with this uh, printed Gothic arch? Exactly the same technique. Okay. I think I used to paint this uh, flat plate, pasta rosa. Okay. So is, is that like articulating paper or is it just a... something like that? Okay. Exactly. Okay. okay. And I made the patient do movements from right to left, forward, and they, uh, this el trazado. Right, the, the tracings, the markings. Exactly, the, el punto que se interceden. Right. So you, you want to, normally when you have a gothic arch and the patient again moves forward, left and right, moves everywhere initially so that they can relax, they're hinging, they got the the, cent, the condyles in centriculation, they're hinging, hinging their jaw on one point, so you know that the condyles are fully seated. Once you, the patient has done multiple movements, you have them go forward and all the way back, left and back, right and back, and you're going to get a V-shape, like an arrow shape, where those three lines match at the back of the plate, that centriculation. And that's where exactly. you're going to put your little, your, little, or your little sphere there, your little ring there, so that you can lock that centriculation in place. This is a conventional... A gothic art tracer, right. as, as, as you told, this is a flat plate, okay, and this is the tracing. This is the same concept that when we found this starting point, okay, we put this little circle to maintain uh -huh. and to obtain, like, when we are going to do the, the traducción. <laughs> uh, the, um, when we're doing what we, that, that's, that's centriculation right there. Is exactly. That what right. Let me ask you a good question. Uh, so why not, why didn't you do the, let's say that you already, you, let's, let's go back to your patient before you printed the denture. You have the upper tray with the border, border molding. You go vertical dimension, you put the lower tray, border molding. I'm sorry, uh, make sure that you got the vertical dimension. You border mold the lower one. Now you have your vertical dimension. You can have, you can have, you could, you could have a second tray with the goth gothic arch. You put it at the same vertical dimension. You have the patient go back and forth. In that moment, you had, you could have accomplished this step right here. Why did you decide to do, you know, to get the bite? Fix the both upper and lower rims, and then go back and do and do your gothic arch. Uh, the first time that I did this was in this patient that I tried to do this uh, registration many times with the so conventional technique. Exactly, but okay. after that, I I thought the same thing as you. So I thought, why? Can I do, I cannot do this in my second appointment. Okay. So that's why there's another protocol. Okay. To do this kind of procedure in the second appointment. So, okay. How can I do the Gothic arch record in my second appointment? Because as you saw, I attach, um, I attach in the other case, that is this case, this structure to the prototype. So if I wanted to 
take an impression with this prototype to do to have super suction i told you that the most important part for me is the thong pushing the back part of the rim correct so i thought what can i do to use this and to also take my impression right so that's when i thought of this in fact this is a cell phone but <laughs> video that in the second appointment i create two prototypes with i'm gonna take a final impression i'm gonna do this boulder molding this is uh replacing the base plate and the bite ring so the lower one has two types of teeth the ones that i'm gonna use to take the impression and after i take the impression i'm gonna change it i'm gonna change this type of teeth to the teeth that have the the part of the tracing so the first part of my appointment you see the key that is you hear the design mm -hmm. you see here the upper prototype and the lower prototype that's the you have like the base uh, lower prototype with two type of teeth the mm -hmm. one that's anatomy has anatomy and the other one that has the mm -hmm. the pin that's going to do the tracing right. okay i knew that i in the first record, in the first appointment, it doesn't, I use the patient denture as a reference, okay, when I scan it, but I knew that this uh, occlusal re registration was not correct, okay. okay, so that's why I go through this uh, uh, part directly. So, at the first part, I'm going to take my impressions using this kind of teeth in the lower ones. And after I do everything that I showed previously, uh -huh. the upper one, the lower one, the, the the thumb movement, the pushing the tongue to the lower part, okay? After I take, I took my impressions with a correct video, okay? I needed to do my occlusal record. So I removed, okay? So I removed this first, a teeth and after that I glue with resin the second uh, teeth that have the tracing part I do the tracing technique that we talked before here's the the movements that the patient did this was the best uh, tracing that I obtained with the patient so here at the center of it okay I put resin, flow of resin here, and I obtained my occlusal registration right, perfect. Uh, like perfect. this, and I did my dentures like like this. Yeah, that's, that, that's a great idea. Very, very nice. And then, what I think it's the only way that we can do uh, dentures without impression materials is with the upper one. In this case, this patient had a uh, flabby ridge. It was not like super extreme flabby ridge, but he she has flabby ridge in this area. Okay, so I scanned the the maxilla. I also scanned her previously uh, done denture from an, another clinic. I use this video. It was a correct video. What happens in, in a case like this that the video is not correct? It's like menos. Right, it's less. Exactly. I can put resin on the occlusal parts of this denture. And increase and the vertical up. dimension. Right. Exactly. Okay. Oh. In this case, it was not the this the this was not the case. But I designed it a denture with the requirements of the patient. As you know, aesthetics, it's um, sub subjective. Right. She wanted, I, I designed it, this teeth with the patient uh, besides me. Okay. 
design, 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 the prototype, the printed base on the printed teeth. Nice. I ha I have a lot of retention doing this by only scanning. Wow. Okay. But it's not the same as when I do the lower one cases. Okay. As I told you, since we started this, the alginate impression in the lower ones, for me, is the most important part of the technique. Okay. Okay? So, uh, I think it's just a super summarized part of all the protocols that we have nowadays. May complete dental for me today is it's more fun than the way that we used to do it. Uh, I think this combination of semi-conventional, I say semi-conventional because it's not the, all, all the same conventional things that we were taught, but this combination of analog uh, concept and protocols with the digital advantage that we have today make us these treatments highly uh, predictable, okay? I can assure you that in each one of the lower one cases that we do, we are gonna have suction, okay? In the, in the worst case, we're gonna have like a little suction, but in all of the cases, the worst case that I'm doing now, in the, the worst case that I have done doing these techniques, it's better than the most, than the than the best case that I did before these, te these techniques. Right. So it has made a huge, a huge difference in the way that you practice doing this and, and the results that you've accomplished. Exactly, like, like the, the worst case with the worst suction, is better than the dangers that I used to do. And I used to teach. So nowadays, uh, it's for me, it's, 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 it's another thing. It's well, you know, I think that, I think that is very, even though this is a very summarized uh, version. And again, what we're trying to do is just to get the idea out there. Uh, you know, our goal is, is to bring again, Dr. Garcia to the United States to have us, uh, you know, to teach us these techniques with a live patient so that we can actually go through the process of the preliminary impressions and the final impressions and the scanning and the design and all that things that he has shown that are very interesting. And like you said, this is, this is the future of dentistry. The future of dentistry is combining our analog knowledge with the digital world that we have today. I can't thank you enough, uh, Edgar, for, for being here with us tonight. Uh, for sharing all these uh, these techniques and your your experience, I I, I can tell that you only not, don't have only passion for it, but you've been able to take this to a different you know to a different level. Uh, you, you're looking at every little thing. You're trying to combine everything you know from the analog world. You're ac actually putting it into practice in the digital world, and, and it just you know it just it makes it seem simpler than what I what probably it is, and I think that. You know, once we get you into to, to the United States and once we get you in next year and we do this course, uh, it, it's going to be amazing to see a real patient, you know, go through the process and just accomplish the results with them right there so that we can all hear those dentures just literally pop out when you remove them. Like I'm seeing on your videos that you can list, literally hear the suction uh, the, or the vacuum that you've created with that with those lower dentures by using this technique. Um, you know, we're going to also invite you to a second part. So I just want you to, you know, start putting together that second part that you want to share with us uh, when you do everything more digital. But for now, uh, I think that this is a wonderful material. And I know that uh, all our viewers are going to are going to enjoy it uh, to the end of, of, of your presentation. Once again, thank you very much for being here. And I want to thank everybody also that's watching us and make sure that you share our YouTube channel with our other colleagues. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to, vis to visit our webpage, www.romerodentalseminars.com. Thank you very much and have a great night.